This video is about what I learned from Michael Hyatt and Megan Hyatt Miller's book Win at Work and Succeed in Life. Introduction. What is the benefit to me? By doing less, you can be more. Has your life been consumed by work? Do you have trouble recalling the last time you mentally logged off from work or got a restful night's sleep? If this sounds similar, you may be overworking and endangering both your personal and professional lives. You'll learn the risks of working long hours and investigate the unintended consequences for your productivity, family, and health. Additionally, you'll learn how to take control of your personal life and position yourself for success at work and at home. Pleasures and advantages of living a truly balanced life from sleeping to getting married to taking vacations. In this video, you will learn 1. Why working long hours is ineffective 2. The ability of a wandering mind 3. How to get back your sleep Idea number 1. Don't let work take up all of your time. The author was eager to share the good news with his wife. His supervisor had given him a bonus earlier in the day that was equal to two times his annual salary. The bonus was a symbol of achievement, safety, and hearty congratulations. He was shocked to learn that his wife didn't share his perspective. She broke down in tears when she learned about his bonus. She told him that she wasn't happy, but that she was about to lose it. She claimed that she felt alone in parenting their five children and that their way of life needed to alter. He expressed shock. He had unknowingly slipped into the perilous trap of overwork. He convinced himself that he needed to be active at all times and that sleeping was a waste of time. In his opinion, maintaining a work-life balance was impossible if he wanted to realize his full potential. The identical action is being taken by millions of Americans. They put in a lot of overtime, and as a result, their families and health are deteriorating. Take a look at these alarming figures. Compared to people who work 40 hours or less per week, those who work over 55 hours per week had a 33% higher risk of having a stroke and a 13% higher risk of having a heart attack. Furthermore, CEOs and business owners divorce far more frequently than the general population. Why? They don't spend enough time on their family life, which is the main reason their marriages end in divorce. Why don't top achievers let off the gas more with all these alarming statistics? Well, overworked individuals frequently respond by working even harder when they feel as though their personal lives are disintegrating. The hustle fallacy is Hyatt's term for this phenomena. High achievers are accustomed to treating hard work as their go-to strategy, so it may seem illogical, but many believe that if they just work more, they will be able to overcome the stress and conflict in their personal relationships and things will get better. But more work is never the solution to being overworked. Fortunately, as you'll discover in the sentences that follow, there is a workable answer to the problem of work-life balance. Idea number two. The modern workplace has the potential to be addictive. Experts predicted in the 20th century that by the year 2000, humanity would be working less, not more. It was assumed that with the advancement of computing power and faster communication, we'd only be working two or three days a week. The big question, experts thought, was what we'd do with all of our extra time now that we didn't have to work as much. But all you have to do now is look at your own life to see how wrong these predictions were. As it turns out, modern technology has given us more, not less, work to do. Smartphones have added an average of 11 hours to a typical professional's working week implying that many professionals now work an average of 80 hours per week. However, we cannot entirely blame technology for excessive workload. 
There's another, more surprising reason why we're glued to our desks in the modern workplace. The truth is that a lot of people's work these days is enjoyable. If you're a successful professional, your daily work tasks are probably challenging, stimulating, and give you a sense of fulfillment. Once you reach a certain level on the career ladder, you can shrug off many of the more mundane administrative tasks associated with your job and spend the majority of your time solving interesting problems. When you find something enjoyable, it is tempting to devote a significant amount of time to it. But shouldn't your personal life be just as entertaining and stimulating? Well, maybe not. The reality is that your personal life and relationships are more complicated than your professional life. When you arrive at the office, your boss will assign you specific tasks to complete. These tasks have a distinct endpoint, and once completed, you receive positive feedback and validation for a job well done. At home, however, things are a little different. Typical household tasks such as laundry, cooking, or putting your children to bed, may not be as stimulating. It can also be more difficult to understand what is expected of us in personal relationships than in professional ones, and positive feedback may be less forthcoming. Many professionals find it more satisfying to simply stay at their desks rather than clock out on time. As a result, their personal lives and families suffer. Idea number three. Make your health and relationships a priority. When you're a high-powered professional, it's easy to lose track of your work-life balance. There are only 168 hours in a week, and before you know it, you're sacrificing personal time to meet more professional objectives. Fortunately, there is a way to ensure that you do not completely neglect your personal life. It all comes down to knowing your non-negotiable priorities. There are a few non-negotiables that you must focus on regardless of who you are or how busy your work schedule is. Self-care is the first non-negotiable. Self-care refers to activities that improve your personal life, such as eating a healthy diet, getting enough sleep, and exercising on a regular basis. Making time to connect with the people you care about or focusing on a hobby you enjoy are other ways to look after yourself. Self-care is critical because you are the common denominator in all aspects of your life. If you're not functioning optimally, neither your career nor your family will be. Your relationships are the second non-negotiable. Megan Hyatt Miller, for example, makes it a point to have a family dinner with her children five days a week. She also makes it a point to go on a date with her husband once a week and to church every Sunday. Many overworked professionals prioritize their relationships, but only with co-workers. They let their personal relationships deteriorate. And, while tempting, it is not healthy. After all, jobs shift. Many people are shocked to discover that their social life has vanished overnight. If you need any more motivation to stay in touch with the people in your life, consider some sound advice from Bronnie Ware, a former palliative care nurse. After years of nursing and talking to people nearing the end of their lives, Ware discovered that one of the dying's biggest regrets was not keeping in touch with old friends. Another common regret particularly among male patients, was wishing they had not worked so hard. So, the next time you're debating whether to skip that fishing trip with old friends in order to spend the weekend working on that work project, keep in mind that you may come to regret it in your final days. Idea number four. Work fewer hours to work smarter. Work and water share many similarities. We need water to live, and most of us need to work to live. Both water and work are most useful to us when we limit their availability. Water flowing down a river is beneficial. However, 
When the river bursts its banks and floods, it becomes an issue. Work is the same way. It requires limits and constraints to be useful. Many career gurus preach that our working week should be unlimited. They say that more work equals more productivity. But this is incorrect. Still not convinced? Consider that research has found that working more than 50 hours per week has no benefits. There are none. According to studies, workers who work more than 50 hours per week do nothing productive with their extra time. Not only that, but one fascinating study discovered that managers couldn't tell the difference in performance between employees who worked 80-hour weeks and those who pretended to work 80 hours a week. So, why do we perform better under pressure? Hyatt discovered the solution when he began leaving his office at 6 p.m. every day and taking weekends off. He was initially concerned that he wouldn't be able to fit everything in. And he was correct. Some tasks were left undone as a result of his restraint. But here's the thing. Even if he worked more hours each week, some tasks would still go unfinished. Why? Because, as CEO, he was always under more time constraints than he had hours in the day. In that sense, it didn't make much of a difference. Furthermore, when he realized he only had a limited amount of time to devote to work, he focused on his top priorities. Instead of wasting time on unimportant tasks, he got right to work on the ones that really mattered. That's the beauty of limiting your work week. Your work limits, like a river channeled in the right direction, will keep you focused and ensure that you continue to go in the right direction. Idea number five. Work-life balance entails strategically allocating your time between competing demands. How do you find a work-life balance? Perhaps you believe it is a mythical concept that can never truly be realized, like the fountain of youth. However, the authors believe that work-life balance exists. Furthermore, anyone can have it. You simply must be crystal clear about what balance entails. Let's start with what work-life balance does not imply. This does not imply taking a break. This may seem obvious, but when people express a desire for balance, they frequently mention how stressed and burned out they are. These people are really saying that they need to rest. Rest is important for a variety of reasons, which we'll discuss in the next chapter. However, when it comes to achieving a better balance, rest is not required. This is because achieving true work-life balance isn't about stopping. It's about going further and faster than before. The key message here is that work-life balance entails strategically allocating your time between competing demands. Albert Einstein, the famous physicist, once said that life is like riding a bicycle. You have to keep moving in order to stay balanced. This straightforward analogy captures the essence of what work-life balance entails. Leading a truly full life entails making small adjustments as you go along in order to keep all of your life's spheres in balance. Work-life balance does not imply devoting the same amount of time to each aspect of your life. Instead, it is a matter of devoting the necessary amount of time. There will be years when you have a lot of professional opportunities that you must prioritize. You may be more focused on the office during these times. However, there will be times when it is more appropriate for you to spend more time at home. Perhaps when you have young children, for example. With this in mind, the most important thing to remember is to be deliberate about your work-life balance. You must make deliberate choices about how to spend your time. Don't put yourself on autopilot and expect balance to happen on its own. If you do, you will most likely find that work takes precedence. Years will pass before you know it, and you'll be left wondering why you didn't choose to spend more time with the people you care about. 
Idea number six. When you stop moving, your imagination runs wild. Inspiration can strike at the most unexpected times. A young writer was on a train between Manchester and London, England, in 1990. The train was delayed for four hours, much to her chagrin. She was left staring out the window with nothing to do and no pen. But something remarkable happened during those hours. She had an idea for a story and spent the time figuring out the plot points and characters. She had the entire concept ready to go by the time she arrived at her destination. J.K. Rowling wrote the story, and it was called Harry Potter. This just goes to show how critical it is to take a break. If you're a high-powered professional, taking a break, even if it's only for a few hours, may be unappealing. Why should you? After all, the modern workplace is built on relentless achievement, and it's difficult to achieve your objectives when you're not working. However, you may be unaware that the advantages of pausing far outweigh the short-term costs to your productivity. Your brain does not turn off when you take a break. Instead, it simply operates in a different manner. Subconsciously, it will work through all of your problems and come up with more creative solutions. Of course, you might not think of something as brilliant as Harry Potter during your pause. Nonetheless, your perspective will shift as your mind wanders, and when you return to work, you will be able to see your objectives with new eyes. Allowing your mind to wander may appear simple or even lazy, but it is your superpower. This is due to the fact that it is one of the few things that human workers will always be able to do that computers cannot. When you turn off a computer, it turns off. However, when you turn off from work, you turn on. You make creative connections and experiment with ideas while doing seemingly unrelated activities such as cooking, gardening, or even simply showering. In this way, the ability to pause does not impede your productivity. Rather, it is your secret weapon and the source of all your human ingenuity. Idea number seven. Sleep deprivation equals poor performance. If you listen to the advice given by modern celebrities, you might get the impression that sleep isn't that important. Public figures such as Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey and entrepreneur Elon Musk boast of surviving on only a few hours of sleep per night in order to maximize time spent on career goals. But, like the myth of the 80-hour workweek, the legend of the perpetually awake CEO requires a reality check. Getting more sleep is probably the best strategy for winning in both your personal and professional life. Unfortunately, many Americans are deficient. According to research, Americans are the most sleep-deprived people in the Western world. But why is sleep so important in the first place? Skipping sleep not only lowers your immunity and makes you more susceptible to weight gain, but it also reduces your ability to perform at work. Sleep-deprived employees make poor decisions and are more likely to employ business strategies that have been shown to fail. Worse, when you don't get enough sleep, the first skill you lose is the ability to recognize that you're not at your best. So you're underperforming, but you won't notice because you're exhausted. That is not all. When you don't get enough sleep, you're more likely to express yourself in a hostile or negative tone which leads to more interpersonal conflict at work. So, with all of the risks associated with sleep deprivation, why do some of the brightest and best minds choose to burn the candle at both ends? Unfortunately, being sleep-deprived is frequently used to demonstrate one's high social status. Going without sleep communicates to others that you are in high demand and have so many responsibilities that you have no time to rest. If you want to sleep more and perform better, try to disconnect from work in the hours before bed. 
One way to put this into practice is to stop taking work calls after 7 p.m. that way. You don't risk losing a good night's sleep over whatever it was that someone called you about. Recognize the activities that disrupt your evening relaxation and establish a clear cutoff point for dealing with them. That was only a small portion of what Michael Hyatt and Megan Hyatt Miller taught me in their book, Win at Work and Succeed in Life. I highly recommend reading it for more insights. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your friends and followers. Your support helps me to grow my channel and reach a wider audience, and I am so grateful for it. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date on my latest videos. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to share more with you in the future.